He is perfect. His plan is perfect. You know, I may not have asked to have this disease, but in some way I think God allowed it to slow me down long enough to see so I would deal with this, these issues in my life so that my kids wouldn't fall into the same trap, just make the same mistakes that I had made. And uh, that generational sin wouldn't plague them. My hope to you is that you would fix any relationships that are strained out there. Love people more. That you would go around and when you wake up every morning, know that it's a gift and that you have another day and that you have a day to either choose one or two things how your attitude will affect others. You can either be grumpy and mad at the world or you can be happy and excited about what God's going to do for you on that day and where he's going to lead you. I'm going to have my wife read something that I wrote um, to the congregation, um, a little paragraph. Um, it says, I've been thinking a lot about eternity. If it's God will for, God's will for me not to be healed and to die from ALS, I know where I'm going. And I will rejoice in heaven with my Father. I also know that our life experience will strengthen my wife, kids, and others I have known to share the love of Christ and all that he has done for us. We don't know God's will, but he is sovereign and he is in control, and his plan is much better than our plan. My hope is that you would see the legacy I've left behind for my wife and kids in Wellspring Church, that you would be proud to have known me and to call me your friend. And when somebody says my name, that you would remember the passion I had for Jesus, that I may have shared and made memories with you during this time we were able to spend with one another in this lifetime on earth. <clears throat> I think you need to clarify about um, the last speech. Oh, on your yeah. email that you sent out. Um, I uh, had a friend of mine email me say, what about this last speech? And I think that it was, I should have said my, my life speech, not my last speech. Because <laughs> <That's not laughs> uh, God's not done with me yet. So, <laughs> And uh, I apologize for that typo. <laughs> um, <laughs> It got people's attention. It worried though. me, too. I said, what does that mean? <laughs> no, God, um, God's got a lot yeah. planned for us. And it's exciting to see what he's got planned mm -hmm. and join him where he's working. And, uh, you know, Pastor Gary, you were talking about dreams this morning. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to share this or not. But, you know, the Spirit's leading, so I'll just share it with all of you so you can hold us accountable. Um, you know, I've been, God gave me this dream, and uh, we, as you may know, we have two houses. We have a house where we used to live that almost sold, but didn't, and, uh, um, and our new house that we've been graciously blessed with that's handicap accessible. And it's amazing looking back how God has taken care of all of our needs. He's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He does take care of everything you need and uh, at the right time, not in our time, but in his time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have this, um, this other house and it hasn't sold and a few of these men in, this, in our church here have been going down to the inner city doing uh, mission work to the homeless and uh, um, you know, I dream that God would use our house for whatever he saw fit. And one of the things that he put on my heart was um, having these guys bring the homeless men into our home, men and women, and rehabilitating them. Um, and, and back into society, helping them uh, have a job, find a job, um, and uh, you, know, sh you know, get them back into society. And they could have a place to live in our house. Um, I know it's a big thing, but God's a big God. And, uh, and I'll meet with a guy in the next week or two about helping with financing to maybe make that possible. So if you could pray 
that if it's God's will, that that would be the way we go. Um, and uh, God would use that for his glory. Um, it's pretty, uh, he said that, dream big, pay D, and don't let anyone doubt what God has. And uh, if it's truly God's will, it'll happen. We've had just some key verses, and kind of what happens is these kind of come out, um, and I hear it on the radio, and then we hear a verse somewhere else, or we have it in a study, and so they just really hit home. And God's Word has gotten through us, us through so much with this disease, with um, just the things that have gone on in our life. Um, and uh, this one hit the summer. Eric was diagnosed. We were camping with my family, and it was in a Bible study. And um, it just really touched our hearts um, personally. It's 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. We've got it on our walk t-shirt. It's funny, made today, let's walk with us. But um, it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we bear being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And this life is so short, it's, it's a vapor. And, um, you know, in the eyes of Jesus, too. And we're here for a purpose. Um, you know, the other day, we, um, Eric's been listening to books on CD and stuff lately. And uh, I put a, the iPod on his ears and heard, it was day one of the Purpose Driven Life. And it said, it's not about you. It was like the first words, and I'm like, oh yeah, we read this book a while back, right when we first started coming to Wellspring, and I'm like, so right, life is not about us, it's not about me, I mean, I've had my days where I'm like, how can I do this, how can I take care of Eric and my children, and um, you know, I just feel so overwhelmed, but it's not about me, it's not about Eric, it's not about any of us, it's about bringing glory to God, and um, and just doing his work. And so um, it's just a good reminder for all of us when we think, you know, selfishly about, you know, just um, what we want to do and what our plans are. And our plans aren't God's plans or our thoughts are his thoughts. So we just, um, God's got us through so much. And um, I know he's going to get us through. I know we have some tough days ahead of us. And Eric's progressed, you know, and I see him every day. So for me, like, we just deal with the changes and we adjust to life with ALS. And um, we've been blessed by getting the things we need when we need it and the family and support and just seeing all you guys here today that have come, you know, that, that we haven't seen in a long time. A nice just few surprises here that um, you guys have driven a long way just to support us because you love us. And so we're just so grateful for our family and our friends and um, this church body and um, the meals, the, the taking our kids, um, you name it, financial support when Eric wasn't working, the awesome fundraiser that was done last, last fall or last May, almost a year ago. And um, so we're just blessed. We're blessed and um, I know God's just going to give us the strength to get through it. And um, we don't know what God's plan is, and we don't know when we're going to take our last breath. It's just become, you know, more real to us because of ALS, but it's also made us, you know, look at life differently, I think, mm -hmm. in our children. I mean, they've, they've, they've really matured, and, you know, both of them have really had to grow up a lot. And help, help a lot. They're a huge help to us, too, and they're a blessing. Um, I don't, you think like I would just have like just a normal life, just, it looks like I'm just, normal get, kid. just a normal kid and like, I don't know, just. You got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. More responsibility. Mm-hmm.